So this November, vote for Donald and little Donald. Together, we will make, make America, America great, great again. again. It's, it's going to be huge. Do the music. Oh, Trump never surrender sneakers? Awesome. I'm open. And Gordon Dwyer's about to find out that winning... Come on, man. How'd you miss that? ...is a state of mind. I didn't miss. It went in. Huh. Do an impression of him? It's going to be great. We are going to build a wall, and it will be huge. I will build a wall, a big one. China, China, China. Here's your paper towels. Can you do an impression of the president for us? <laughs> You're fired! It's unbelievable. I go out with my crew every day. They're tremendous people. And we love McDonald's. It's great. I mean, I live on McDonald's and Diet Coke. It's a tremendous diet. And look at how trim I look. I'm the handsomest president in the world. It's a lot of great people. Lots of great people <laughs> on both sides. That's, excuse, excuse me. Excuse me. Fake reviews. Fake reviews. Fake reviews. My question is, do you believe you can be a devoted president to all the people? That is a great question, Denzel. Thank you for this question. <laughs> About the inner cities. My name is James, and I didn't ask anything about no inner city. Martha, this black man is attacking me. <laughs> also, speaking of black men, you know who else should be in jail? Hillary Clinton, she's committed so many crimes. <laughs> she's basically a black. Uh, you know he loved China, you know, because they took him out there, and he was like, look at that wall, so beautiful. <laughs> and am I correct in assuming no Mexicans? None? That's right. Hey, Steve, tremendous to be here, just tremendous. Okay, now, earlier today, you went on TV and you told the American people that you want to make a deal. That's right, Steve. All right, so we decided to do this in the only format that you can understand, a TV game show with women holding briefcases. From the producers of <laughs> It's Them Trumps. The first show to ask the question, what if Donald Trump was black? Darius Trump, his wife Malika, Darius Jr., and Lavanka. Together they are them Trumps. As you know, I love Bible. It's my favorite book. <laughs> I've definitely read it. Uh, my favorite part is probably the ending. Now it all wraps up, but this is a very special Bible and it could be yours for the high, high price of $60. But I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing this for the glory of God and for pandering and mostly for money. Sir, they know everything. They know about Russia. They know you used campaign money to cover up an affair with Magic City stripper Cinnamon Mercedes. And they know about the pyramid scheme you've been running through your company, Darius Trump Country Hams. Be the end. Mm -mm. Dad, the media has been out for you since day one, and you prove them all wrong. That's right, nobody ever thought you would get this far. All right, now in your briefcase here, you got the deal that Congress offered you in December. And I said, no deal. Yeah, nobody's excited about that player. <laughs> uh, what was your counter offer to date? I want five billion from my border wall, and in exchange, I'll extend DACA and I'll release the kids from cages so they can be free-range kids. <laughs> Maybe I've done some dirty thing, but I'm making America great again. And what these feds don't realize is that I'm the president. They can't lock me up. And even though I may be black... Freeze, Trump, you're under arrest. Yeah, that sounds about right. Well, there's a lot of scientists out there. There's these guys that come in here, they talk to you, they don't know what they're saying. <laughs> Dad, you're back. That's right. There's only one rule in America. You can't prosecute a sitting president. It's called checks and balances, baby. And even though I'm black... You've been impeached. Yeah, I was waiting on that. <laughs> All right, what do you say, Mr. President? Five. You want to open briefcase number five? No, I'm saying a lot of these women are fives. <laughs> They'd be like, do Trump. It's very easy. All you have to do is like describe something and then say you described it that way. That's it. It's every time. Like, what a big room this is. I walked in here. I said, wow, what a big room. 
That's it. Fuck you, you fucking piece of shit, ugly, fat, orange fuck. Social media. They had to take it away. I was too good. In fact, go ahead, put it back up. Put it back up. People say I've got bad makeup. Tana looks like someone painted her face like a clown. That's what we're gonna call her. Tana, it the clown. She looks like him. She looks like she should be in a sewer. You are utterly disgusting. I'm disgusting. I saw you walk in, I said, who's this? She, is this a pig? I didn't know they were letting pigs in. You're a dictator. Old sage, what a loser. What a loser she was. No one here is gonna go on a date with you. There'll be no problem there, I'll get a date. You There's gonna be so many dates, people, whoa, this guy has so many dates. You, none. I don't even need a date, but I'll get a date if I want a date. You can go on Tinder, have you heard of this? There's a Tinder, you go beep boop pop. I'm proud to welcome Kanye West, Yeezus, Yandi, Yadam, Yosein. <laughs> An amazing guy. Thank you for coming, Kanye. Yeah, that's right. I flew here using the power of this hat. <laughs> that's terrific. <laughs> All right, and let's remember the big lesson today, that black people love me, they love me way more than they love Alec Baldwin. I saw you come in, I said, that's the one. The belle of the ball. You're the prettiest one. I'm gonna be completely honest with you here. I'm not that interested in You're that. the ugliest. This is pretty exciting. I've never been on a date with a white guy before. Hit the buzzer. I mean, I'm just wondering what it would be like with something a little smaller. Let me stop you there, Elaine. Huh? Oh, this guy might be cuckoo. I mean, I've been in the room with Dennis Rodman and Kim Jong-un, and they made a lot more sense than him. And then, if you eat in Chicago, some people call it Chirac, but I, the murder rate is going down 20% every year. And pretty soon, it's gonna be a negative murder rate. We're gonna be digging bodies out of the ground. Bodies back and talk. He doesn't stop. He doesn't listen to anyone but himself. Who does he remind me of? A few years ago, women would have the flat butts. Not you, you've got a very nice one. Thank you. You know, I did, I polled very well with the blacks. How am I polling with you? And now, and now it's time for me to hug my new dad. <laughs> Come on in here, dad, bring it in. Get in here, blood. Don't check to see if your wallet's still there. Don't check. I want everyone to know I love this man. I love you, Kanye. We got a lot more in common than people know. We're both geniuses. Yeah. We're both married to beautiful women. Mm -hmm. And we've both definitely been recorded saying the N-word. I don't recall saying I would get a date here, but if I did say that, maybe I will. Oh my God. Hello. Oh my God. Do you like my shirt? I got to die to the special, the tackle shop. There's a two for one at the tackle at the tackle shop, the bait and tackle. I can get you one, it's two for one. Wow. How are you, Mr. President? Well. I'm great, especially since you, since you exposed all the, all the Jews that were putting 5G in my brain that wanted the meth. Have you ever noticed that when Trump has no idea about something, he just says any crazy thing that pops into his head, <laughs> and then he adds, I don't know? <laughs> Which is pretty slick, because then you can never call him out on it. Maybe birds can fly backward when we're not looking. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. No, please, please, sit down. Sit, everybody, sit down. Sit down. Look at this, a standing ovation. Have a seat, please. These guys, just sit down. It's okay, it's just me. It's just me, the greatest president ever. It's a lot of great people on both sides. Lots of great people <laughs> on both sides. I know Harry O, he's a great person. He couldn't vote for me at the time. Now he can vote for me once he gets out. I love Snoop Deal Double G, great person. So do you love Death Row Records? I love people Death Row. I love Death Row. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Fake news. I love Death Row. <laughs> You know, the only thing that would piss Trump off more than charging him with obstruction of justice would be saying that he failed at it. He'd be like, how dare you? I'm the best at everything, including obstruction of justice. Throw some justice at me, obstruct it. I have been getting tremendous crowds everywhere I go, and tonight is no exception here in Scottsdale, I have to tell you. My secret service detail has told me there's over 25,000 people in this room tonight. With 5,000 outside in the freezing rain and the snow. 
But the press, the press, terrible people, the press. Terrible people. Terrible people. Horrible. They're the worst. You know what's really the worst? The Scottsdale penny saver. They're the worst. <laughs> terrible paper. Hello, this is Donald Trump. Hopefully, your favorite president of all time. Better than Lincoln. Better than Washington, frankly. Better than Ezra. <laughs> you, you may have seen this week, I made a major announcement. I'm doing my first official collection of Donald J. Trump digital trading cards. <laughs> or to use the technical term, nifties. Nifties. <laughs> I call them nifties because they're so neat. Trump cards are each $99. Seems like a lot, seems like a scam, and in many ways it is, but <laughs> we love the Trump cards. We just love them. You can also get them for free by just going online and looking at them, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> maybe taking a screenshot, but we'd really prefer it if you sent the $99. Today, I have a very big announcement. A lot of people have been speculating about who I'm going to pick as my running mate. Chris Christie, LeBron James, <laughs> Chewbacca Mom. <laughs> All good choices. But no, the only person good enough to be my vice president is me. But you know what they say, you know what they say? Everyone says this, not me, I don't say it, but everyone says if it's not a Trump hotel, it's a dump hotel, right, right? I didn't say that, I didn't say that. You know, no one gives press conferences like me. Nobody, nobody, no, I stood up there for 90 minutes, 90 minutes. Great press conferences, informative press conferences, real news press conferences. And by the way, if anyone tells you any different, that's fake news. That itself is fake news. And there is a way, there is a way to tell fake news from real news. It's so simple. It's so simple, and I'm gonna give it to you. It's like a math equation. You guys deal with numbers, right? Numbers and colors? Okay. <laughs> if you hear something good about me, that's real news. <laughs> something negative, that's fake news. <laughs> so simple, so simple. Oh, by the way, before we get too far into this, because I'm only going to speak for two or three hours, <laughs> are there any protesters here tonight? Any protesters? By a round of applause. Good. If there are, there we go. Trump people, beat the crap out of her. I'll pay your legal fees. And though I have committed no crime, I will be arrested, tried, and found guilty. Sound familiar? <laughs> A famous, wonderful man arrested for no reason at all. <laughs> if you haven't put it together, folks, I'm comparing myself to Jesus again. <laughs> From Newsmax Studios and the writer of Like Mike comes another magical sneaker movie for white people. So you're saying these Trump shoes made you good at basketball? No, they give me the power to say I'm good at basketball and then double down on that until people actually start to believe it. And if I may, before the benediction, give you this promise. You're gonna be so blessed. You're gonna be tired of being blessed. I guarantee it. Something came up recently, and I don't appreciate it. I don't appreciate it. People are saying that Trump doesn't go to church. Lies, lies. That's not true. On my way here tonight, we stopped at Church's Fried Chicken. <laughs> Tremendous chicken served in a church, okay? <laughs> Best chicken church I've ever been to. And I found out something tonight. I didn't know this. I didn't know this. KFC stands for Kentucky Fried Chicken. No one talks about that. No one talks about that. As we speak, I am being persecuted on a level the likes of which the world has never seen. Even worse, even worse than the late great Jesus. You know, many people are saying we're very similar. We're both very tall, very popular, and both, frankly, white Americans. <laughs> Now he gets whatever he wants. Mr. Mitchell, Woods. everybody's saying I should have your office because my cubicle is a disaster right now. Well, can I have a minute to gather my things? Bye-bye. I love the military. I love the military. You know what? Let's have another hand for the military. Veterans Day is technically tomorrow. Observance is on Monday. 
thank a veteran for their service. And you know, I would have been in the military. I would have been in the military, but I had bone spurs, bone spurs. I had the worst bone spurs ever recorded in human history. But gratefully, they miraculously vanished after the war. Mr. President, I gotta be honest, this is only gonna get way worse. I like you, Sarah. You're a straight shooter. That's why you've outlasted Sean Spicer, Scaramucci, Bannon, Priebus, Gorka, Flynn, Yates, and Tom Price. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think it's because folks listen to me because I'm no nonsense, but I'm all nonsense. <laughs> well, you handled that NFL thing just great. You know, Jesus did some incredible things. Some would call them miracles. In terms of fish and with regard to bread. <laughs> Lack of fish and bread, you know. He rose from the dead on the third day. I would have done it faster, possibly two. <laughs> possibly two days. I think we could have done it a lot faster. But... You mean Donald? <laughs> Are you serious? Believe me. Believe, believe me. I know Chris Tucker. He's a great comedian, great guy. I like him. I'm, it's true. I do like him. I met him. Well, I didn't say much, but I said hello. <laughs> I said, believe me. He had a good mind for business, water into wine, pure profit. <laughs> and he had big, big rallies just like me. And a lot of his followers got in big, big trouble just like mine. <laughs> All because I told them exactly what Jesus would have said. Get very violent and start a war. <laughs> He gets whoever he wants. Wow, that was the most fantastic lovemaking you've ever had. Not really, it only lasted two hours. That was a two hour love sesh. You had a big O in there, a very big O, but. I did? No. Wanna go again? I'd love to, but you're too tired. <laughs> Mr. Jesus, quite a guy. But now people are saying perhaps I'm even better than Jesus because I'm a self made billionaire and Christ was. Let's call it what it is, a Nepo baby, okay? <laughs> he did Good Friday. I said, why not make it great? We can make it great. <laughs> With me, we'll be doing Great Friday, perhaps even DGI Fridays. <laughs> nice shoes. But you know, in many ways, the real magic has been inside of you all along. <laughs> Wrong. It comes from the shoes, and you're coming off as very stupid and, frankly, quite rude walking in here like this. My work here is done. And then after that, they will come for me, lock me away. Because just like Jesus, all I did was be friendly to a sex worker, and now they want to put me in jail. So, uh, just awful. But who knows, folks, maybe prison will make me even more popular, like that guy back there. Jesus of Azkaban, that guy. <laughs> Jesus of Azkaban, he's called. Debates are stupid. You should be paying me. And Wolf Blitzer looks like Papa Smurf. Well, trust me, it may seem like what's coming out of my mouth is B-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-S, but <laughs> it's all part of the plan. The more chaos I cause, the less people can focus. They're all getting so tired. So tired. Let me show you. How long ago did I declare war on North Korea and Little Rocket Man? Uh, four months. Wrong. It was last Friday. See, I'm bending time. <laughs> so let's keep the chaos coming and shake things up around here. Speaking of shaking things up... Two minutes. I'm going to do ten. <laughs> I'd like to begin with a list of complaints. People are mean to me. Joe here is very mean. Chris Wallace is mean. The economy is mean. It keeps losing jobs, which is mean to me. The China virus has been very mean to me by being a hoax, and that statement will not come back to haunt me later this week. But it's so sad. Religion and Christianity are totally gone from this country, and we need them back. Without religion, you don't have laws, you don't have mission trips. I'm told mission trips are a lot of fun. You go to Mexico, you build a house, maybe you make out with someone on the last night. <laughs> Then, of course, it's back to Clearwater, Florida, like it never happened. Now, look, here's the deal. No, it's not. Excuse me, please. No, whatever you're going to say, no. Mr. Okay. President, please let him speak. We, he let you speak, now let him speak. But he's lying. I can't point out if he says a lie. 
I said two words, you son of a no. <laughs> Don't do it, Joe. <laughs> it's exactly what he wants. That fake news reporter from ABC, she asked me, uh, was, was Camilla the DIY candidate? I said, I said, uh, do it yourself is wonderful. It's wonderful. I've never been against DIY. Why do they put that on me? You know, the fake news says I'm against DIY. It's terrible, folks. But Camilla's got to go. We've got to freeze the race. I'll keep campaigning, but she can't anymore. She can't be allowed out. We've got to do this investigation. She has to be arrested. And we've got to find out the truth about Camilla. Which one is she? Indian or black? What we need in this country is law and order. When someone breaks the rules, they need to face the consequences. No exceptions. Okay, what about your taxes? There have to be exceptions, Chris. <laughs> the terms law and order, they're very vague terms and rules are meant to be broken. It's the same with masks. I've got mine right here in my pocket, okay? My mask, all right? <laughs> Kellyanne, what are people saying about my cabinet appointments? Do they love them? Um, they're certainly uh, very passionate about them. I just saw one uh, very nice tweet saying that they were, um, they were great for our nation and the future of our children. Tremendous. Who sent that? David Duke. Okay. <laughs> yes, you know, let me ask you this. Is every family a black dad and a white mom with, you know, the kids who look tan? So many interracial commercials on TV. Luckily, J.D. Vance is married to a lovely white woman, Usha. Usha. I think uh, she's Norwegian. Usha. But Kamala, horrible, horrible. She's now saying she's black. You know, folks, this is, a, this is a deal breaker. Stone cold phony baloney. This is fraud and we will be suing. She's using everybody, including her racial identity. Donald. I want you to apologize to Joe. He started it. Hey, hey, I don't care who started it, all right? I don't even care who sharted it. Now, you apologize to Joe now. Sorry. I'm sorry, what's that? I said sorry, okay, are you happy now? But you know, she's, she was always saying she's Indian, right? And she's eating curry, you know, the photos, her eating curry, her eating naan bread, which by the way is delicious. The naan bread, I really like it. She's eating this, she's eating masala, masala, that. But now it's soul food, folks. Now it's soul food. It's, it's grits and pig knuckles and collard greens and a lot of spicy stuff. Uh, she wasn't eating the soul food train before, was she? And now it's the Black Eyed Peas. The Black Eyed Peas, which actually, I have to admit, is a wonderful band. Mr. President, I'll ask you directly. Do you condemn white supremacists? Condemn them? I don't know any. I mean, who are you even talking about? The Proud Boys? The White Boot? The Eugenics Eagles? Yeah. I didn't even know any of these groups. I certainly wouldn't even know how to signal them if I tried. <laughs> Hell, if you could build a wall that's two mile, thousand miles long on the Mexican border, I'm sure you could help us. How long is that wall? It's, uh, it's 2,000 miles. 2,000 American miles. <laughs> I cannot wait to see the look on those Mexicans' faces when you make them pay for that wall. They say it's going to cost $25 billion. Fantastic, Pedro. Thank oh, you very okay. much. Sir. <laughs> A lot of people doing me. You're a very good impersonator. <laughs> yeah. oh. He's nice at it. <laughs> it's not bad. Joe DeRosa, what a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting pig. He I would stop. love to put the, the country on your shoulders, but Joe, it might slide off. <laughs> Very good comedian. Whoa. I could be a comedian. Whoa. A lot of guys. A lot of guys say Joe's built like a worm. I don't say that, <laughs> but Joe is built like a worm. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like the Men in Black aliens grew up. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. That was incredible. Mr. Trump, same question. Do you feel you're modeling appropriate and positive behavior for today's youth? No. Next. <laughs> Hello, sir. I heard you went to see Hamilton. How was that? It was good. I got a free lecture. Uh, I heard they booed you. Absolutely. Mm. I love you, Mike. You're the reason I'm never going to get impeached. <laughs> sir, being president is not going to be easy, but we'll get through it if we work hard together.
Thank you, Mike. Oh, and Mike, you're gonna do everything, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> this is what he does. He says these offensive things, then he bullies anyone who challenges him. Well, guess what? You can't insult your way to the presidency. Oh, really, Jughead? Because I'm at 43, and you're at three. Jeb, you're a nice guy, but you're a lightweight, and I know for a fact that you pee sitting down. No, I don't. Yes, you do. We have a tremendous amount of drugs flowing into this country from the southern border or the brown line, as many people have asked me not to call it. <laughs> That's why we need wall, because wall works. Wall makes safe. You don't have to be smart to understand that. In fact, it's even easier to understand if you're not that smart. <laughs> I thought it was very important that I come down here and talk about crazy Kamala. Crazy Kamala, uh, who, who forever was saying she's Indian. She's Indian, not black. Indian. She was always promoting her Indian heritage, her Indian heritage. And uh, when I say Indian, I mean, you know, the dot, not the, not the feather. And, uh, uh, I, and I, like, I like the Indian people, you know what I mean? But we're not talking about the, those Indians, like Pocahontas, uh, who own all the Native American casinos, which, which, by the way, don't pay taxes, okay? All right, they're on sovereign land. Do you believe this? Which, by the way, is like the biggest scam ever. You know, I had to pay taxes on my casinos, which, by the way, did very, very well. They did incredible. But I got out of Atlantic City at the right time because, honestly, it's a dump. It's a dump, folks. Atlantic City, <laughs> horrible place. You're welcome, Mr. President. It's great to see you guys today. You're doing a tremendous job. And may I say right off the bat, Pierce, it's great to have you out of that evil CNN and back where you belong in London. <laughs> and the beautiful Susanna, uh -huh. I am going to reinstitute, reinstitute my beauty pageants because you look tremendous today. <laughs> Trump? I mean, this guy's the chaos candidate? Am I right? Chaos? Is he for real? No, man. <laughs> Jeb, you're a very nice man, but you're basically a little girl. <laughs> Folks, this is true. I got hold of Jeb's birth certificate and full disclosure. His real name is Jebra. We have a problem. Drugs are coming into this country through no wall. I asked President Xi if they had a drug problem in China. <laughs> and I'm not gonna do the voice, but he said, no, 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 me no like drugs, me like death penalty. You know what it sounds better with the voice, I think, I must say. And let me just tell you that Thomas has been such a great school. I mean, quite frankly, it's been fantastic. Yeah. I mean, we've had so many great experiences here. You know, one of those would have to be starting foreign language. We're learning languages from Spain, from France, from Germany, and China! <laughs> And you know, people say I don't like China. I love China. I mean, I love China. I mean, I have so many terrific friends in China. But I took Spanish, and let me just tell you, by the way, that it was fantastic. Boy, fantastic. Look, I know you probably have a lot of questions for me about this impeachment nonsense. And I'd love to answer every single one of them, believe me, I do. But as you can see from this very loud running helicopter behind me, I'm in a big, big hurry right now, so I don't really have the time, but everything is perfect, okay? Thanks for all your questions. Hey, everybody, this is your president. You know what it's going to be. I'm going to be your president. You know what it is. 2024, your president. But enough about me, enough about me. Did you see the amazing interview by Cat? Williams, Cat Williams, I'll repeat it again, Cat Williams, very, very, very funny comedian. I never really heard about Cat Williams, never really heard about him, until this week when I saw his interview. Wow, it's broken the internet. I know what it's like because I break the internet. I get big numbers just like Cat. This guy has read over 3,000 books. I've read about 10,000, not trying to brag about me, but I've read more than you can. <laughs> but uh, he was incredible. He told the truth, 
came right out the box and just made everybody uncomfortable. And you know this business, entertainment, very phony, very fake. Lots of fake comedians out there. Lots of fake, just like fake news. A lot of fake comedians. And he came out and just really ripped the place apart. He was like a tornado, just going everywhere, knocking and damaging everything. And everybody scattering and scampering, and it's beautiful. Whether you believe him or not, whether you believe him or not, I mean, I'm very impressed, and I would love to talk to him because he reminds me of me. Tell the truth, make people shit their pants. Really good, very good. One of the best interviews that I've seen in a long time other than my own interview, because I like to watch myself, and I'm pretty fucking good. And I want to tell you, Kat, that was impressive. Shannon Sharp, amazing show. You have the best show. Club Shawshank. I love that. I love that show. One of the best shows out there right now. Shannon Sharp, Super Bowl champion a couple of times. Super Bowl champion. I'm going to tell you, Skip, you're a piece of shit for even trying to disrespect him. Shame on you. You should be ashamed of yourself. But I'm going to tell you this. Shannon Sharp, you have a great show. I'm your number one fan. Cat Williams, Cat Williams, you're very great. You're huge. I love you very much. Can't wait to watch more of your truth. And I'm a big fan of Club Shasha. What's your favorite death row record, uh, Mr. Trump? All of them. <laughs> All of the death row records. Don't try to pin me down. I see what he just... Excuse me. Fake news. Excuse me. Fake news. Fake news. <laughs> She's dividing this country, folks. You can't be two things at once. You can't be two things at once. I didn't know she was black. I didn't know that. Then all of a sudden, she's black. She turned black. She turned black, folks. Flip the black switch. We've seen this before. How can an Indian person be black? You know what I'm saying. You get this. They should be, well, there will be. There'll be an investigation into Kamala Harris turning a black. Okay? Ari Shafir. Yeah. What a loser this guy is. <laughs> yes. He's 70 years old, this guy. They tell me how old he is. He can't be this old. He is this old. That's amazing. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm going to say, I know the art of the deal, and I have to come over and straighten this Brexit thing out that you people messed up. And I am going to tell the people of England right now, because they're tremendous people, we are, uh, Winston Churchill will never put up with this. There is no way that Brussels, Paris, or Berlin is going to dictate our monetary policy. There's no way. Thank you so much. Um, what would you like to say to your North Korean counterpart ahead of the big meeting next week? Well, I'm so excited that I was able to put this together and hopefully get a Nobel Prize. Not me, I'm not saying that, but uh, the Supreme <laughs> Leader. By the way, Supreme Leader, great name. President is good, Supreme Leader, so much better. He's a great guy. I've called him Little Rocket Man. Now he's Big Rocket Man, and he's great. He kills journalists, which I think is tremendous, because I don't, I, you know, fake news is killing me over here. So I think that's really good. He's a smart cookie great guy and I'm really looking forward to this meeting and thank you, thank you, thank you for the big envelope and the letter inside. I haven't read it, I'm not much of a reader, but I'm going to read it soon or someone's going to read it to me. So thank you. I love this guy. See, I fire people. You kill people. So much better. So much better. Exactly.